Hey, what's up guys? My name is Sachin and in this video, I'm going to explain you how to implement the FCM that is the Firebase cloud messaging in your Android application. So many of you all might be familiar with the GCM, which was the Google cloud messaging. But now Google has replaced GCM with FCM, which is a more efficient version of sending the push notifications to any of your Android devices. So without wasting any time, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the console.firebase.google.com to set up a new project for the FCM. So now over here, just click on the create new project button. And put a name for your project. I'll put it as FCM demo or FCM tutorial. Then select the country or the region which you belong to. And finally, create the project. Now, once this is done, you will get to see a dashboard which is similar to this one over here. Now, for this video purpose or for this tutorial purpose, we are going to make an Android application using the Firebase. So, I'll be selecting the Add Firebase to your Android application. Now over here, it is asking us for the package name, which we can get it from our Android Studio project. So just go to your Studio project and go into manifest file. In your manifest file over here, just copy the package name and go back to the FCM server and just paste it over here. There's no need of pasting this SHA1 key, which is optional. So just add in your package name and click add app. Now once this is done, it will give you a demonstration of how the things would be going once your application has been added to the server. And one important thing is that it would automatically download a Google-Services JSON file which we need to copy to our Android Studio project. Now once this screen comes up, just click on continue or else you can just cross it out. And just copy down the Google-Services.json file and make sure that there is no extra numbers which is attached over here, which is in my case. So I'll just show you. Just give me a minute. Now copy this JSON file and go back to your project. And from your project, select an option for the project, which in earlier case was Android. Expand the options, go to the app folder, just click on the app folder and click paste. Now over here, keep in mind that we need to get rid of this extra numbers which are over here. In your case, there might not be any numbers because you might be adding the Google J the JSON file for the first time. In my case, there are many JSON files available in my downloads folder. So just rename the file. Now once this is done adding, you can go back to your Android settings which were there previously. And you can just close this file over here. Okay, now once this is done, we need to add a couple of Java files to our Java folder over here. So I have the files ready in my project. So I will just copy down over here and explain you step by step. Okay, so now I have copied the two files from my other project to this project over here. But before that, we need to add a couple of permissions to our manifest folder or the manifest file over here. So just go to your manifest file and add the permission for the internet settings. The next thing we need to do is we need to register the services that we created just now over here. Don't worry about the red marks which are coming over here. It would get rid in just two minutes. So now just add the services over here. Now once this is done, go to the build gradle file, which is the first file over here. We need to add one dependency over here. So just add this dependency. And after that, click on the sync now button. Now this might take a couple of seconds to load. 
once it is done building the next step is to go into the build.gradle file which is the second one over here and over here we need to add a couple of dependencies the first dependency goes over here and the second one goes right down over here now once these two dependencies have been added once again click on the sync now button okay so now our project is fully ready so now you can check the java folder there are no red marks over here anymore also the manifest folder does not have any red lines so now let us run the project on a real device which has the Google Play services installed on it. Now this might take a couple of seconds to load the Gradle file for the first time. So I'll be back once this is done. So here we go guys. Our project is up and running. So I'll just demonstrate the project in a side window over here. So that you can get a brief overview of what exactly is going on. Now the next step is to send the push notification to the device. So for that we need to go back to our Firebase dashboard and from the dashboard in the left settings we need to select the notifications option. Over here send your first message. Type in the message text and the label. Now the next thing is to select the app and from over here in the target section if you want to send the message to all the registered devices you can use the user segment or if you just want to send a message to a single device you can just click on the single device radio button and just paste in the token ID that we just got over here for the device that we registered but in our case, we need to send the message to each and every device that the application is registered. So we'll select the user segment and click on the send message. Now this will prompt us to review the message that we are just sending to the users. So it's okay with us. Now just click on the send button. And there we go. Our message is now been forwarded to all the devices where the FCM that is the FCM for this application has been registered. So that's it for this video guys. Thank you for watching. If you like this video put a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more exciting video on Android. I'll be coming up with a few updations in the Firebase cloud messaging in my upcoming tutorials. So if you guys have any suggestions then please do let me know in the comment section below. Once again, thank you for watching. Peace.